Hello, everybody. This is Tony Turner, and welcome to the market now as of Friday, February 9th at about 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Well, big gains in mega cap stocks today, such as NVIDIA, pushed the benchmark S&P 500 above the 5,000 mark for a second day today after modest revisions to 2023 inflation figures supported assumptions that the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates later this year. So on that cheerful note, let's go on to three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. First of all, as we always do, we're going to look at a daily chart of the S&P 500 spider symbol SPY. Of course, this is the ETF that closely follows our benchmark S&P 500 index. In fact, you can take this 501 and multiply it times 10 and you'll get approximately right now the uh, level of the S&P 500. So anyway, let's look at this chart. Now, when I captured this chart today, the SPY was trading at $501.05 above that 500 line at a new all-time high. And uh, it just, it, <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. Um, and we have to be smart about it. Now, we know that from the October lows back here, uh, at 409.21, this was when interest rates were rising. This is when they started in October, started to fall. And when interest rates fall, of course, that's good for products and the stock market and everybody's wallet. So we know that from these October lows at $409, interest rates started to roll over a little bit. As a result, buyers came into the market, short sellers started covering and price broke up and over the 200 day, the black line, the 20 day, the red line and the green line, the 50 day moving averages. Um, it climbed quickly. It broke through the prior resistance here, the October highs at about 438, gapped up to the 446 level and quickly climbed through that. Uh, starting now, it, 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 it got it quite a premium to the 20 day moving average. Then it used it for a trend line all the way through November, all the way through December. Um, and it started to falter a little bit in the beginning of January at 477 back in here, but then it started up again, used the 20 day moving average, pulled back for a day or two a week or so ago, then is climbing here dramatically. Give it credit. We're at all time highs here or within a couple of cents of them at $501 and five cents. Uh, a very, a very pretty pr uh, picture. Of course, we're traders and we're wise and we know that uh, uptrends are higher lows and higher highs. We're right now at pretty much the higher high part. Uh, so we're, if we look down here at the 14-day RSI, uh, Relative Strength Index, we know that when this line gets over 70, and it's not a quick move, but when it gets over 70, price is getting at a point where some profit taking will probably come in, maybe not in the next day or two. But it happened here. Look how the RSI dipped below that 70 line. And a few days later, we got this little pullback. Not much to talk about, but there it is. Uh, price can't go higher unless it goes lower at some point. So uh, it's good to know. Uh, but the RSI is back over the 70 line this week. So again, we're overbought in the short term. Uh, and price again is trading at quite a premium to the 20 day moving average, which is coming in at $487.22. And you can think of moving averages when price is moving in an uptrend like this, you can think of moving averages like the 20 day or the 50 day, you can think of them as a staircase and think of how, and I've used this analogy before, think if you were walking up or climbing up a staircase and the staircase is the 20 day moving average. So you take your leg and your leg, and your foot moves up and then you come down and take a step. Then your other foot comes up and you come down and take a step, but you can't fly over the top of the steps for very long. You all, you always have to put your foot down and regain your balance at some point. And if you can use that analogy in your mind and know that while price may continue higher like a staircase does, um, your legs, which are working you up that staircase at some point have to come down 
and touch the step to gain balance and get uh, and get energy to move up again. So think of it like that. At some point, as the 20 day moves higher, yes, we're going to have some profit taking and this will come in a little bit, but we just need to be wise about it. Um, we don't right now, we don't have a resistance area here because we're in brand new territory. So um, any resistance here, of course, would be at today's highs. Um, and uh, as far as support goes, we have the uh, support at the 20 day moving average at 487. We have the pivot down here at 483, that's potential support. Uh, we've got the 50 day moving average at about 475 here. And this prior uh, level at, I'm gonna call it, if I can draw a straight line at 480. 475, 480. So there's lots of potential support here should the S&P, as I like to say, pull into a rest stop. And you know what, guys? Also think of this and think of it when you're trading tech stocks as or any stocks. Think, think about when you're driving your car. You can be enjoying the scenery and it can be a beautiful day, but you're smart. You have your seatbelt fastened. So in the same manner, we, we enjoy the move and we enjoy everything about this, but we keep our seatbelts fastened. We keep our stops in place. Our next chart today is a daily chart of the Invesco QQQ, symbol QQQ. The Qs represents the top 100 non-financial companies in the NASDAQ 100, including many of the much talked about Magnificent Seven companies, including NVIDIA, Meta, Amazon, and Microsoft. Now the Qs, just like the SPY, is in with a cent or two of its all-time high as I speak right here at $437.23. Now, as we know, we of course, everybody had this October low. Uh, from this October low at $342, the queues shot up when, price, when uh, interest rates started falling a little bit. The queues shot up. Uh, and price moved over the 20-day moving average, the 50-day moving average. Note how it had just come down to the 200-day, hadn't fallen through that yet as the SPY did, but of course the Qs is full of high momentum tech stocks. So uh, it managed to stay above the 200-day, but moved up over the 20 and the 50-day, which were inverted, um, shot over its price resistance here at 373. Uh, and uh, back and then up over September uh, resistance and finally gapped up to uh, 383.71 on November 14th. Then you continued to consolidate, push higher into December uh, and finally pulled into a rest stop the first week in January down to 395. It did for a few days fall below the 20 day moving average, but it rallied right back up again uh, and then continued to push higher in the past three weeks. Look at the premium it's trading at, but just like our staircase again, the 20 day moving average, our foot has to come down. We have to regain our balance and energy, then start up again, then oops, get our balance again, oops, get our balance again in order to move higher. So right now, again, as I said, the uh, Invesco QQQs is trading right at its all-time highs at $437 uh, and right now 23 cents. Now the 14-day RSI is still overbought for the Qs, not quite as overbought as the SPY, but it is. Um, like the SPY, uh, the Qs are in fresh new territory, so there's no real resistance overhead here. Uh, nearby price support would be at the 29 level right down there. Then the 20 day moving average at 423. Then we've got a pivot here uh, at 416, 417. And uh, of course the 50 day moving average coming in at 409. And that could be reasonably strong because we've got two pivots and the 50 day moving average coming in right there at 409, 410. So um, just know that in order for this party to continue uh, <laughs> and for the Qs and the SPY to remain higher for longer, we want both indexes to remain hopefully above the 20 day, but definitely above the 50 day moving average. 
And now for our final chart of the day, uh, we're going to look at a daily chart of the ProShares online retail ETF, the ONLN. And for our purposes today, I'm just going to call it the online, uh, basically what it is. It has 18 holdings. Some are U.S., some are non-U.S. holdings. Uh, top holdings include Amazon, eBay, Carvana, Williams, Sonoma. Um, and again, there's 18 of them. Now, when I captured this chart today, the online was trading at $35 right here and 33 cents. Uh, now, I'm going to describe something to you. You can't see it on the screen. But if we look at an online chart, and I look at a monthly chart, it's a fascinating pattern. The online um, actually made an all-time high of $93.45 in February of 2021. What happened was the ETF started trading in July of 2018. That's when it initiated. And it traded for quite a while in, in a range between about 27 and about 41 going into 2020. Then with the onset of COVID, this makes sense, the online spiked in April of 2020 and then flew to that high I just mentioned in February of 21, 2021 up to that $93.45. It was just like a, it almost looked like this pattern here, um, but, but the monthly chart, it just, it traded in a base and it came up, flew up, and this is on a, this is a daily chart, of course, but this same type of pattern then fell back down again, made a steep low from the February uh, high at $93, down to lows in November of 2022 to $26. So that was quite a move. Since then, it has been trading in a range from 27 to around 36. So as we look at today's chart and move to that, we'll see that the uh, everybody made October lows. So we see that the online made a low in October at $28.50. Then it climbed, and you can almost hear, see if you're an analyst, you can almost see here a head and an inverse head and shoulders, which of course is positive. Uh, so we can see the the, the uh, neckline there. So we can almost see here this inverse head and shoulders. So then, from that October low, the online pulled out and started moving up in a pretty steep uptrend. And then what we had here, of course, up walking up the 20-day moving average. But then here, of course, is going to move like that or pretty close to going to move like that because it, this is retail and this is the month of December. Of course, we're all buying for the holidays. So uh, that makes sense. And that also, we also know that when price moves up at a real steep angle like that, at some point, there's going to be profit taking. And there was. Uh, so now, then it moved down, made a little... Uh, a little continuation pattern that included a double bottom. So it fell back down to below 33. The highs up here were 37. And then we can connect that with prior highs and see that we have resistance here uh, at about 36, 37. And we can say, okay, so we see where we are now. Um, if in the coming, and I see where it is now. And after looking at the big picture on this, I'm thinking this may be something that may work as long as the market stays positive. If in the coming week, the online can stay above the 20-day moving average, which is now coming in at $33.93, if it will stay above that and the market stays positive, I will add a small position to my online training portfolio, trading portfolio with a stop down here, a tight stop at $33.50. Now, with if and when, and it may take a little time here, if and when the online climbs above this high at 37, the prior high, and it may take it a little. In fact, I hope it does take it a couple of weeks to do this. I want a good uptrend, not a straight up fall down uptrend. So in the coming week, again, if, if the online can stay above the 20-day moving average at $33.93. I will add a small position to my trading portfolio with a stop, a tight stop at $33.50.
if and when the online climbs above $37 and stays above it for three days in a row, I will add to my position. And of course, by that time, I will have a trailing stop. So you may want to keep an eye on the online, <laughs> ProShares Online Retail ETF in the coming week. Now, if you'd like to become a more successful trader, this is the perfect time to check out my online training programs. You can choose from 10 different programs, including our popular flagship product, Seven Steps to Successful Trading. You can also uh, like to uh, learn how to swing trade successfully, one of our favorites. Uh, you learn how to trend, tra trade, ugh, can't say it, trade the trend to profits. With this online program, I really like that because it's it's easy to keep your stock going and, and, and when a trend is moving higher like we've had recently. Uh, how to read charts, great for novices, three winning setups, great for short-term traders, and bottom fish like a pro, as I always say, one of my favorites uh, because you can, it's again, you can buy and hold with certain conditions that, that keep you making profits. These... Uh, Programs are timeless. They will show you how to elevate your trading skill set, which is very important, so you can increase your gains quickly and easily. Check out all of my online training courses. Just go to the link on this screen, or easier still, click on the orange button below. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.